Welcome. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family. And we're so happy that you've welcomed, welcomed us into your home. Now, we want to hear from you, so send us an email with a question or a comment to Jim and Joy at EWTN.com. Well, today I'm very excited Amen. to have Vinnie Flynn and his daughter, beautiful daughter Erin Flynn with us. And they are both with Mercy Song Ministries of Healing. You could go to their website, mercysong.com. Now, uh, when well, we have course, them on, of yes. Of course, they're renowned for the Chaplet of Divine right. Mercy. You've seen them over decades, I guess, yes. leading the Chaplet of Divine Mercy. But they Mercy. don't look any older. They look exactly <laughs> the same. Um, really, really beautiful. And so we're excited to have them on today. And we're going to have a beautiful yeah. conversation about a book that they co-authored together yeah. that will enhance our adoration and mass time experience that we would encounter the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords Amen. and participate deeply with that process. And that's what we were sharing on Monday's show. We asked you to call in to share your kind of personal intimacies with Jesus at the Mass and in Eucharistic Adoration. You blessed us with electronic sharing and, and calling in uh, and that's really what they're pointing out. Mass and Adoration Companion to help you grow in your intimacy with Jesus at Mass and through Eucharistic Adoration. Yes. Well, is May is a really busy month for us. We have two graduations, we have First Communion, we had Grandparents Day, and then we have a baptism. It's busy for Mary too. It's yeah. busy, it's just right up busy, but it is what it is and it's all life and it's all wonderful things. Now Nina, Francis Wright, Rebecca and Nathan's fifth child. It better be. It, 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 she's their eight, fifth. so I yeah. guess that's where she she's is. She's their fifth. <laughs> uh, Nina made her First Communion. Yeah absolutely adorable. She was um, beside glowing. I mean, she was so excited and Nina is one of those, uh, she doesn't internalize her feelings, so she's really kind of yeah. out there with how she's feeling. So if she's happy, she's gonna let you know how happy she is. If she's sad, she's gonna let you yeah. know how sad yeah. she is. Yeah. And she was just explosive absolutely. with all of her feelings. And the, the preparation for First Holy Communion at St. Francis Xavier in Mountain Brook and Father Jerbeck at the cathedral, I mean, serious stuff, yes. wonderful stuff. You know, they know who the Eucharist is. And those children, about 70 or so, made their first Holy Communion. And right before, as they bring up the gifts, they brought up um, what would be used, the various uh, uh, vestments. Right, and, and everything that was needed for the cloths, altar, yeah. yes. And they said what each one was. Right. And the patent, and the chalice, and the bread, and the wine, and, and the and wine, and the everything. corporal. Mm -hmm. So like, they really know what's going on, and it was beautiful. Her godparents were there, Lainey yes. and Gary Gagnon. Mm -hmm. And so they're godparents, but there they are now at the baptism. Uh, First communion. Oh, First communion. We have, we have a baptism coming up. We got right, that With too. Amelia, yeah. her sister, that was yeah. born about three weeks ago. Uh, so Holy Communion, Eucharistic adoration. If our children knew who the Eucharist really is, they wouldn't leave the church. Mm. And so it's just so critical. And uh, Vinny and Erin Flynn, they've written this uh, companion, Mass and Adoration. It's a wonderful companion. We, we love doing this. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're all going to deepen our faith, how we need to sit and to bask in the glow of Jesus Christ in Eucharistic adoration and better understand what's taking place at the Mass, that we might be able to enter in and give ourselves, to plunge ourselves in the very presence of Jesus. So plenty more to come. Yes. We'll be right back. Please don't go away. Welcome back. Well, you are at home with Jim and Joy, and today we have two wonderful guests, Mr. Vinnie Flynn and his beautiful daughter, Erin Flynn. And you, you look when you see them, you'll go, I know them. They are with Mercy Song Ministries of Healing. You could go to their website, mercysong.com. And today we're here to talk specifically about their new book, Mass, and it's a Mass and Adoration companion to enrich you, to transform your life as you encounter Jesus mm. at Mass 
enduring adoration. And it's just a little tool to guide us with that, right? right? So, so beautiful. Well, we're so happy to have you now for our family at home was looking at you. And um, you have done Divine Mercy, the Chaplet of Divine Mercy on EWTN for how many years? When did you do that many moons ago? Um. Well, I was 13 when we recorded the first so one. So don't say how old you are, which is <laughs> a know, long time ago. Is that, is, that, yeah, is that a violation of <laughs> child labor laws? Because you've been around a long time. It's like you were born and you so were on TV. It's okay. Didn't pay her. No, <laughs> yeah. to get there you go, there you go. But you got, you got a great blessing from it. Right? So yeah. you were 13? Yeah. Wow. So beautiful. The first one, which, yeah. 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 And, it, you know, it's timeless, right? Yeah. It's a timeless oh. production. Yeah. Yeah. And there you were praying and so beautiful. I can't tell you how many countless times I would come home in my house and, and there it was because we keep it on EWTN yeah. all the time. Yeah, I was thinking and even when you, we're not there, it's on. So you were saying like everybody knows your faces, but it really is such a privilege. And I know that you know it yeah. because it, it's, it's different than any other show because since right. it's not a show, I mean, right. you, you're worshiping the Lord and people mm -hmm. are getting let in on your worship and then everybody's worshiping. It's like we're having this encounter together so you have such a special place in people's hearts, yes. not just because of your personalities, but because we worship the Lord and you're help, mm -hmm. helping to facilitate that right. for yes. millions right. and millions of people. Yeah, and there's such a power, yeah. there's mm -hmm. such a power to the prayer itself that it's, mm -hmm. it's, like, it's impossible to sing it, for me anyway, mm -hmm. without encountering Jesus. Right. Mm -hmm. it's, um, my spiritual director used to call it a mini mass. The chaplet mm -hmm. is a mini mass. Mm -hmm. It's we're offering the Eucharist, yes. right. you know, mm -hmm. to the Father. Yes. So yeah. it's just so powerful, and I think that's why it, it is timeless. It moves mm -hmm. people yeah. so much. It's so beautiful. So I, we've mm -hmm. got your fourth chaplet now, I think, for EWTN. So I saw it in yeah. April. That's when it aired. Right. So I got that that yeah. airing and saw it. And like the others, it's really beautiful. It's updated because yeah. you're a full-blown beautiful woman. <laughs> and then that other family members involved with this one? The yeah. Yes. Got, the last yes. two. Yeah, yeah the, last, the last yeah. two versions, mm -hmm. It's it's been uh, all three of our daughters, yep. uh, Aaron and her sister Colleen and okay. Mary, mm -hmm. and then our son Brian yeah. uh, is also involved in the last. Well, how two. many children do you have? It seems like well, it's. Yeah. <laughs> there, there are seven altogether. Seven children, yeah. beautiful. Yeah. And where is home for you? Tell our family at home where where well, is home for you. Home home is is in Western Massachusetts, mm -hmm. so far west that if you sneeze, you fall into Albany, New York. Okay, there you go. You know, and but it but it's four miles from the National Shrine of Divine Mercy okay, in perfect. Stockbridge, mm -hmm. Massachusetts, and Good. so that's been home away from home for us forever. And am I correct? You have. 30 grandchildren? 30 grandchildren, oh, yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah, wow. the blessings just keep coming. Mm -hmm. yeah. And your wife and you are married how many years? Oh, I was just about Actually, to say, yeah. we just celebrated our 50th yeah. last Touché. June. Touche! Yeah. Yeah. Big party for them. Yes, yeah. big, big party. Yeah. It was, That's yeah. the best. And yeah. see, she put up with you all those years. She's Imagine. going straight to heaven. <laughs> she is, she is. I'm winning her her crown. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what marriage is supposed to do, right? It yeah. makes us holy. Yeah. We yeah. all learn to die to ourselves and live for the other. That's mm -hmm. the, if it ain't happening that intimate union, Jim used to say to our children, if Jesus ain't happening here, it ain't happening anywhere, right? Because yeah. right? Right. you could be on TV and you could be singing songs till the cows mm -hmm. come home. But if Jesus is in between and there yeah. isn't the Trinity happening here, yeah. what do we have? Yeah. So, yeah. so Vinny, you've been involved in a number of books that you've written. I think you've co-authored some as well, no? I just edited. You know, just edited, yep. okay. Substantially <laughs> edited <laughs> some of them. You got four Dad, books. Dad, what were you thinking? Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> you got books on confession, the Eucharist, worship. The Eucharist was the first just because it seemed to me that it was the sacrament most misunderstood mm. and most important. And then, um, and then confession had to be next because of what I felt were, you know, the, so many of us Catholics were raised thinking it was all about sin and all about behavior when in, in, instead it's all about healing. It's about God wanting to heal us from all our woundedness, mm -hmm. you know, and he knows what sin is. So that was the, the, the second one I really wanted to do. And then the, the third of the Secrets series was Divine Mercy. And that really is the one that is the umbrella over everything. That, and I was very anxious to finally get to that because it makes all the quote theology of the sacraments make sense yes. because it's all about fulfilling God's plan. The reason we have the sacraments is to fulfill God the Father's plan yeah. to have mercy on us all. Yeah. Well, you've 
experienced so much mercy, the both of you. You've read so much. St. Faustine is so much a part of your lives and theology. St. Therese as well, because yeah. um, you share that at the beginning of your book. What, when you, how would you, can you encapsulate mercy when you say mercy? What you've learned and what you're experiencing, can you help people uh, understand that a little bit or at least put it forth? Yeah, I mean, I actually love to, to try to do that because for years I was working with mercy. I was working with some of the, the, the great, quote, experts on divine mercy, and I kept struggling with that. And mm -hmm. finally I said to Father George Kosicki, whom I was working with, Father George, wait a minute. What is mercy? You hear love and kindness and merciful love and merciful kindness. W what, right. What's the difference? And we started talking about the Trinity and that the Trinity is this interchange of love where the Father is eternally loving the Son, the Son mm. eternally returning the love of the Father. The Holy Spirit is the, that love. And that each person in the Trinity deserves the love of the other person. Mm. But that love has to go out beyond. God isn't content to keep that love among the three persons of the mm -hmm. Trinity. Mm -hmm. He creates more beings mm -hmm. to bestow himself on. That's mercy because no one else deserves it. Right. Mercy is des love that we don't deserve. Mm -hmm. It's oh, when yeah. God, who is all good, right. bows down to creatures mm -hmm. and gives himself totally mm -hmm. to those creatures and elevates those creatures to really yeah. a divine transformation yeah. where mm -hmm. yeah. we become divinely human like God, yeah. mm -hmm. created in his image. Yeah. That's incredible mercy. Yeah. Erin, your, your thoughts on how you would describe mercy or how you're encountering well, mercy? Well, I just, in response to that, just, it's not in love's nature to, um, to stay within, for instance, within the Trinity. Mm -hmm. right? It's love's nature to overflow. Mm -hmm. That's why I love that image of just overflowing love out of the Trinity. Yeah. And then that is mercy because it's to people who don't deserve it, right. or to creatures who don't deserve yeah. it. I know so. that I'm, somehow I, I think, you know, there are people that have said this in a different way, especially recently, maybe Pope Francis, or, but you know, that, that mercy is what God's love looks like when it shows up. You know, like, mm -hmm. mercy is that manifestation, mm -hmm. like you said, it's being poured out on mm -hmm. people, it's touching people, mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's drawn, he's attracted to weakness and mm -hmm. to sin, not that he wants sin, mm -hmm. but he's attracted, that's what he's coming for, and he wants, right. to, he wants to give himself to that yes. person and meet them in the midst of that. Right. I, I think of it, you know, you always don't touch the power lines. You might get electrocuted mm -hmm. or somebody's electrocuted. And then, well, you can't grab that person, but Jesus comes and he grabs you. Mm, that's good. He, he comes and he yeah. throws that lot in. Yeah. It's not just simply a covering, you know, but he mm -hmm. covers us with mercy. He jumps in, he comes mm -hmm. and he does what's unthinkable, mm -hmm. what nobody else will do. He gets that, right. that power current. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. need healing, we need deliverance, right. we need whatever. Right. And who wants to be involved with that? That's really messy and right. ugly. Well, maybe I can't right. do anything with it anyway. He jumps in and he grabs right. it. Touches our brokenness. Right, yeah. it's the Samaritan love yeah. mm -hmm. that Pope Benedict mm -hmm. talks about where, mm -hmm. where God is compelled. Because he is love, he's compelled. Mm -hmm. His heart is torn apart by our weakness, mm -hmm. by our wretchedness, by our sin. Mm -hmm. So it's not that he's bad at me, which is right. a Bible. He's hurting for me because he knows I'm separating myself from him. Right. And he sees the woundedness. He's compelled to reach out to do something about it. That's beautiful. And that's, that's where the mercy comes in. It's not based on anything I'm earning. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, tell us, were you compelled or why, mm -hmm. why this mass and adoration <laughs> companion? I mean, it's not like a regular book. I mean, it's, it's all about the mass. It's all about Eucharistic adoration. There's, well, tell us about the book and, and why you did it and what we might find here. Mm -hmm. Um, we started out, at least I started out, um, wanting, I asked Erin if she could start putting together a bunch of prayers because I was remembering the missalette, mm -hmm. the missal rather, right. that I had when I was a kid. Right. The mm -hmm. daily missal and the prayers, especially I was remembering the prayers of preparation before mass, right. mm -hmm. the commu before communion, Thanksgiving prayers. But my whole spirituality has, has developed to the point where I want, I wanted a more personal encounter with yeah. God. So mm -hmm. I wanted prayers that would do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As she started putting stuff together and we started rethinking it and um, it kind of developed where it, it has become kind of an application of the other books. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah. the concepts that have been so close to me and I think have been so close mm -hmm. to Aaron, the, the, our own, with our own spirituality, mm -hmm. that those concepts now become real where 
for instance, in the Seven Secrets of the Eucharist book, one of the secrets I mention is it's not about receiving. We're not just receiving communion. Right. We're entering, entering into, into right. communion. It's not right. passive. It's active. Mm -hmm. Well, so somehow or other, a lot of prayers got in here mm -hmm. that have that idea of entering yes. into mm -hmm. what's happening, yeah. a real meeting and an encounter yes. with God. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, I grew up in the Catholic church and for a variety of reasons had departed from it, mostly my own ignorance. But one of the key things to me was I didn't understand faith. And so I would see Jesus upon the cross or Jesus in the Holy Eucharist. And I said, well, what do you need from me? You don't need anything from me. And in fact, he doesn't need anything from That's me. Right. Right. But, but I do need to kiss him back. Yes. Mm -hmm. And nobody ever told me I need mm -hmm. to kiss him back, that I need mm -hmm. to respond to his love. Because why well, don't need to respond? He's got everything. Like, it's just kind of the way it is. Like, and that's, that's a joy for him, a joy for us. And that's what you're saying. Mm -hmm. That you need, need to reciprocate. You don't play mm -hmm. ping pong and just one person's hitting it to you. Mm -hmm. You got to hit, hit the ball back. I didn't know I had to hit mm -hmm. it back. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of that in this book. Mm -hmm. Here's how you hit the ball back. And the Lord really right. relishes and loves that you mm -hmm. come to him, even though he's the infinite and all-knowing and all-powerful, you know, God, there's, he loves his children to come to him. And mm -hmm. that's a real hall hallmark with you both in terms of your, your intimacy and, and your sharing. Erin, your mm -hmm. thoughts on, you had a lot to do with bringing this book together and, and share with us your, yeah. your process. Well, we started this book actually um, 13 years ago. Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe the longest book ever. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, but we just, so I started um, compiling the prayers uh, just little by little and and then projects got in the way, sort of, you know, mm -hmm. that were just meant to happen mm -hmm. first, and so this got put on the back burner. And so over the years, we just kept getting back to it as we could. Mm -hmm. But it was always on our hearts to do it. Yeah. And, and like he says in the introduction, because we also wanted it. Right. <laughs> I used to use a, a little prayer book as well, mm -hmm. when, back when I was at Steubenville, and we would, you know, rush from class and, and go, to, go to Mass down in the city. It's beautiful church, St. Peter's. And I would have this little falling apart prayer book. Mm -hmm. And it would just help me so much enter in. I had, you know, maybe five minutes to try to prepare and mm -hmm. enter into silence after, you know, this, the craziness of student life. And, and this little book helped so much because it had those preparatory prayers. Right, right, and, right, you know, right. So that was well, always on our hearts to do one. Many, many prayers, both old and new, mm -hmm. whether it's... Uh, Augustine or Aquinas or Father Benedict Rochelle, mm -hmm. where you both have written a number of prayers. Mm -hmm. um, Cardinal Ratzinger, our Pope, yeah. um, Pope Francis in here with Our Lady of uh, Undoer of Knots. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so all that's yeah. there. But you say at the beginning of the book that you're the editor. What do you mean by the, you're the, the editor? The reader is the, the editor. editor. Yeah. The reader is the yeah. editor. Well, it's just, um, I'm hoping that it will be what the title suggests, that it will become a companion mm -hmm. for people, right. that mm -hmm. people will carry this around with them. I use this every day, yeah, you sure. know? And it's, so it's, but a lot of the prayers, especially through the opening parts of the Mass, they're like little prayers that I'm suggesting to say before each reading, right. little prayers at each elevation, right. little mm -hmm. prayers before you say the creed. Mm -hmm. Just, well, I'm not figuring that people are gonna sit there and mm -hmm. go through this mm -hmm. every time, mm -hmm. right. but, but that gradually they'll get used to the idea of, okay, mm -hmm. I have a role to play in this. Right. I want to enter into this. I don't want to just do the responsorial psalm. I want it to be my response to mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. So little tiny ways of entering more deeply into it. And like one of my favorite ways is the what we call the patent and the chalice right. prayer. Mm -hmm. I was just looking up that. That, yeah. that you, know, you place yourself on the patent. Oh, I saw that prayer when I was a kid. It, it mm -hmm. blew my mind. Mm -hmm. It was like, wow. I'm offering myself on this patent with Jesus to the Father. Well, so we've put a prayer in there. I'm hoping people won't keep saying that prayer. Right. Mm -hmm. That they'll write their own in mm -hmm. their heart. Mm -hmm. That they'll get used mm -hmm. to placing themselves in whatever words right. or wordlessly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on the patent. Mm -hmm. Cast themselves into the chalice. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I say, Lord, splash me into mm -hmm. the chalice. Mm -hmm. Immerse me mm -hmm. and, and all my loved ones. It, it, it comes out differently every day. Mm -hmm. That's what we're hoping with this book, mm -hmm. that, right. that we'll, we'll kind of jumpstart yeah. people right. yeah. into talking in a more real personal way with Jesus to encounter him. Right. Well, and so beautiful yeah. because so many people go into mass like it's an obligation and miss mm -hmm. the encounter. This giving them the tools so that they yeah. could maybe not be looking around, or, but to be mm -hmm. focused, to bring my body, mind, heart, yes. soul, spirit right before the, the Lord in mm -hmm. that way and to train mm -hmm. me, mm -hmm. right, to do that right. better. Aaron and Vinny, thank you so much for beginning to open up for us Mass mm -hmm. 
and adoration companion. You'll be back with us on, on Friday. We look right. forward to more. Yeah. Um, we're going to take a break at this point. We'll be right back. Plenty more to come. Please don't go away. Father, it's great to see your face, your thoughts about today's show. You know, when uh, uh, Vinny mentioned uh, Father George Kosicki, mm -hmm. I couldn't help but think back to 1985, one of the first jobs I had as an engineer here yeah. was recording the Divine Mercy Chaplet with Father George mm -hmm. and the nuns oh, in wow. the chapel. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And we didn't have the robotic cameras at the time. In fact, the Mass wasn't televised at that time. It wasn't until the 90s that that began. Okay. So we had to run the cables over the top of the roof oh my just for that one shot <laughs> and bring the cameras up there. Yeah. And the sisters were in the cloister side. And I've often thought about how this network is so connected with divine mercy. Mm -hmm. Because you think about that from the beginning, it really wasn't a devotion that was well known. And Father George helped to make it better known in the airing of that first chaplet yeah. that we had. And now the Flynn's doing so many oh, beautiful renditions of that and uh, even Pastor Warren, what, Rick Warren, yeah. mm -hmm. how he mentioned that he would watch that yes. and it was something that inspired him as well. So I've often said this to different people in different groups that I really see the network as an instrument of his mercy, mm -hmm. of calling people back to himself, that invitation to his mercy and that's really what the network is about. Yeah. So. Well, mm -hmm. I've heard from Protestant friends also mm -hmm. who uh, would watch it and not say, what are they praying? What are they saying? Mm -hmm. but, but seeing the people committed, uh, seeing the Holy Spirit, right, uh, mm -hmm. through the airwaves and they're being captured. Right. Who doesn't need mercy? Everybody mm -hmm. needs mercy. Yeah. Right, whether you're Protestant and Catholic, and everybody wants that encounter with Jesus, and people pleading and crying out yeah. for mercy in song and prayer. Mm -hmm. And it's always in my mind the most beautiful day we have at the shrine, which we air at three o'clock. Mm -hmm. We have the Divine Mercy Chaplet there on Divine Mercy Sunday, and the people come and they just are all heartfelt mm -hmm. in their prayers yeah. and their mm -hmm. hymns, and it's just a beautiful yeah. day where we're basking, yes. you know, in a special way in mm -hmm. His mercy. Yeah. It's devotion and revelation for this time, possibly more than ever. Many, many mm -hmm. of us know it, and it would only take an instant for everybody else in the world to know mm -hmm. that they right. need mercy. Father, close us in a prayer and blessing. Father, we thank you for this vessel of your mercy of EWTN and also the Flynn's who've mm -hmm. helped this devotion to become more known and loved so that we may trust more and more in your divine mercy that comes to us through Jesus, your Son. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Father. So tomorrow we bring you the National March for Life in Ottawa, Canada. Our coverage begins 1130 Eastern mm -hmm. Time, 1030 Central. Check the EW10 website for showtimes in your area. You're an important part of this family. You're always at home with Jim and Joy. May the Lord have mercy upon us and mercy upon the whole world. Keep it on EWTN. Bye now.